Okay, um, I went to see Napoleon at the movies, uh, and he was supposed to be a hero. It says he came from nothing and conquered everything, uh, but they kind of made him, they kind of took our hero and made him like a zero. They kind of made him a simp and a wimp. And a weakling and a whole bunch of stuff like that. They, I mean, the people loved him. Politicians hated him. The military thought he was great. And we, apparently most of his troops were following him to hell and back, it seemed like. But they made him where he wasn't that great of a fighter, but he did go, not like personally fighter, uh, but he did go straight into the battles. They made him... To be a great tactician, which is true, but they made him to be not very tactical when it came to picking women. Uh, or being very tactical when it came to politics. Uh, they made him kind of be like a, a guy who didn't really want the jobs, but people... You know, put him in the power. People behind the scenes put him in power. Um, and it's like they took Napoleon's. They made him a simp and wimp. They made him too simpy for a whore that he even married. And that's why there's a lot of things you can learn, men, MGTOW men. And stuff from the movie Napoleon, like to not mess with the type of women that he messed with. Mm. Yeah. Don't be a sap and a simp and all that because she was over being a slut and whoring around while he was out in the battle. Made him, actually he was, not only was he a sap and a simp for his wife Josephine, uh, which loved him more after they got divorced and could not make him an heir, but he got, you know, someone arranged a marriage for political reasons. And like the very first night that he got with his second new wife, he um, produced an heir. He got exiled twice. First time didn't last. The second time, they made it where. His loss at Waterloo seemed to be because of the woman he loved dying, uh, where he couldn't, you know, really where he didn't really care that much anymore, um, about it, about life and winning because he no longer had his love. But he made him too simpy, like too much of a simp. Like, the wife, Josephine, seemed like she knew exactly what she was doing to get him, you know. To be ruled by her, in some sense of the word. Now, his other lady in his life that he loved was his... It wasn't Liberty, but it was his version of what Grant should be. Uh, so, he, um, I guess he loved France actually more than he loved Josephine. But they came, but France wouldn't reciprocate their love to him back as much, or whatever. Um, so, yeah. He really disliked the monarchy. Um, but it's like, okay, you know how artists, like musician artists, make their greatest hits album? Where their greatest hits? Right? Well...
with Napoleon, this movie, it's like they took his worst hits and put it in the movie. It's like they took his failures and put it in a movie. It's like they didn't look at his successes and they didn't look at the good things. They looked at his weaknesses and the wimpinesses of him. And they just turned around and made this great hero, this great commander, this great military genius tactician, Napoleon, which here's a picture of the real Napoleon, by the way. Just throw that out there. Um, anyway, they used that um, to uh, they, they took his worst worst hits his not his best hits, not his most accomplishments and they just, you know and it looked like they tried to glorify for him, for him, and you know, try to make the whores seem like they can be strong, independent women. The whore would have been nothing without Napoleon. Just, yeah, I'm thinking that if the real Napoleon would watch this movie. He would have took that sword right there of his and found David Scarpa and Ridley Scott and stabbed him. With the sword. And cut him to bits and pieces for blasphemy. Blasphemous. Uh, not telling the full story. Um, not telling the whole story. Not telling the real story. Um, and making him look bad. You know, they made Napoleon look bad. Deformation of character. That That's what I'm trying to get at. Anyway, if you want to go watch it, I mean, it has some good battle scenes. Like, the one battle scene where he talked, tricked, uh, enemy onto ice a iced lake and then start shooting the lake with cannonball and they start falling in that was a pretty cool battle uh, it has the battle of waterloo where he lost uh has that battle it has him it has him where he's trying to con where he went into moscow and they burned moscow to the ground just so that he wouldn't be able to keep Moscow. But the the cowards left. Um, yeah. And the cowards also didn't fight. The Russian cowards didn't fight the French. Um, instead, they would do sneak attacks a whole way that he went to Moscow. Um, and he sent his people back when he should have pressed forward, in my opinion, even though it was a Russian winner, he lost more men. He, he probably lost more men turning around than he would have if he had just stayed in Moscow. He should have guarded Moscow and the city and not let them burn it to the ground. Or he should have just pressed forward and went on to... I guess they want to they change to St. Petersburg? Yeah. So, like you said, he should have just pressed on. He will move to St. Petersburg and let them burn it to the ground and so on and so forth. He should have just pressed forward until he made the Russians have nowhere to hide. Because he lost more people turning back than he did if he would have gone forward. That's just my opinion on that matter. Uh, yeah. I had some of his, er like it, one of his earliest battles where he was not a general yet. They had that battle where he took over the fort and took over 
and use their own cannons against them to blow their own the British ships up. That was pretty cool. Uh, they showed him where he wanted to, where he ran up the stairs and was fighting alongside his men, but they didn't show him as a very good fighter. Like, even his horse got blown by a cannonball out from under him, so showed several times where he could have gotten killed and died in the movie. So, the battle scenes are good. The politics scenes are just terrible. The sex scenes are just terrible. The uh, love crap is just terrible. The uh, political junk is just terrible. They could have left out all the garbage and just had a bunch of battle scenes. <laughs> and they could have did better in the battle scenes. Like, show his his victory battle scenes. Show his greatest hits. Not Don't show his worst hits, you know? Okay, I'm trying to get it. Anyway... And they didn't talk anything really about history of anything i thought the movie would be about like a bio biopic where it started from like the beginning of his life and went to the end of his life but it it skipped like his whole childhood it skipped it skipped like his whole upbringing it skipped all that and started with him at that first battle i was telling you about where he was a commander or whatever and it had his brother secretly using him like his older brother, I think, was secretly using him, and other people were secretly using him because he won battles. And then at the end, they told us how many people he lost in the battles that they showed of his own men that died. Instead of showing us how many men of the enemies he killed, or instead of showing us all his great accomplishments they did that oh it did show you this cool way to stop an insurrection which if uh, we had did that on January 6th that would have been something right um, there was a bunch of loyalist royals who were still loyal to the crown and whatnot um, in one thing that were going to storm the new capital of the politicians and uh, he came up there with his um, with his army, and they had the cannons on them, drawn on them. And when they ran to attack those people, they were unarmed, uh, and they were trying to, you know, storm the capital, storm the hall of parliament, or wherever. Well. They didn't, it didn't work very well because he drove, he blew them straight to hell with cannonball. Uh, I mean, these unarmed people, they are only armed with fists and papers and shouts and, uh, you know, flags or whatever. And he just blows them straight to hell. <laughs> and then they start running. I'm like, that's one way to stop, that's uh, how you stop an insurrection right there. Yeah, which gives us only more proof that scene is proof of why civilians and citizens should have weapons because if the military and the government are the only ones who have weapons then they can turn them on us and blow us straight to hell that's the reason why we have the second amendment so we can create a true insurrection when needed and overthrow a dictatorship of a government. So, yeah. They even had a scene where Napoleon... I mean, he was being used, but he got mad at the politicians and the politicians... Now, this being said, there was like 20 plus to 1 and they were starting to beat him up so he ran outside to where his soldiers were and then he took his soldiers in 
and surrounded the parliament with politicians, uh, politicians with um, so with um, guns with his men, had them cir- encircled, and um, goes, well, now are we going to vote? So it was basically a military coup. Which was a pretty cool scene, but it made him look like a wimp, where he could hold it off battles if he used his military soldiers to do that. But, yeah, It's like they overlooked some, some of the good parts of history and the real historical significances of Napoleon, and they just was like, eh, we're just going to put it in a setting where it's only about France. We don't care about nothing else. The, 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 the Louisiana Purchase, nothing was even mentioned about it. Um, several of the historical significance of what Napoleon was doing, they didn't. They didn't go in to dive deeper or into depth about how it affected all of Europe and Russia. In America and so on and so forth. And it seems like they would have gone into a little more detail and depth of stuff like that. Instead, they tried to make it mostly just about him. Not his best, but his worst hits. And how he was a simp and wimp toward, toward Josephine, which was his love interest. Love. And of course, his loyalty to France, which was a corrupt, twisted loyalty because he was being used by his brother and a few other people, you know, to become where he was. He became king because of the king, king makers. He became king because just like America wanted to make George Washington the king, which had a lot of he had good victories, but he had defeats too along the way. George Washington had enough sense to say he didn't want it. He wanted to be. He didn't even really want to be president, but he allowed, accepted the first term. Then he said he was only going to do two to make a precedent. And George Washington was different. He was smart. He wanted to go back home. Napoleon, on the other hand, they made him kind of dumb and being used by the powers that be, the politicians, his family, his love interests, and so on, and different things. Anyway, that's my review in the poem. The movie. I think that uh, that they did Napoleon wrong in this movie. Um, And uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going watching it because, uh, yeah. I mean, if you want to go watch it, the best parts of it are the battle scenes. Go watch it for the battle scenes. Don't watch it for any of the historicalness, politicalness, or love story that that was intertwined into the movie because all that makes him look like a simp and a wimp and a weakling that was just being used by multiple different people and if you watch it just for the awesome amazing cool battle scenes where he does show off his tactical commanding abilities that's what you should watch. The rest of it's pure garbage. It's just garbage. Um, anyway, have a great day. And remember, God's good all the time. All the time, God's good. Keep on gaming. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Jesus loves you. Jesus God. Jesus the Lord. Jesus King. Jesus is real everything. Do you like movie reviews? Would you like to see more movie reviews? Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share. And have a great, wonderful day. Later.